All right, so for the Friday tractor story, it's not actually Friday anymore. Nope. But we're, we're recording the Friday tractor story. Yep. And uh, obviously... It, but this will do, you know, this will do. It's not Friday, but this will do. Perfect for See, the farm. There you go. Right? It goes right, goes right with it. Yep. So obviously, this is Torque Whistler um, and his 4010, yep. which... Uh, of early 4010. Yeah, we were just we were just talking about it. I wasn't totally sure what year it was, but probably like probably like a 61 somewhere around there. Yep. It might be might even be a 60. I don't know. But um, this we have two of these. This is the Cadillac version. So this has got an M and W turbo on it and a three point. Yep. And our other one had no three point, just straight plain Jane and. Uh, the two of them pretty much did, when I was a kid, this was, we did everything with this up until about, oh, 76 probably is when we bought, we bought a, a case 1175, which <laughs> it's not still on the farm and it's one that I probably wouldn't go try to find to get back, but sorry, all you case guys. <laughs> They're used to it. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It was like being Amish. As long as you didn't know any better, you were okay. But once, once you realized, it was time to move on. And a lot of the guys, like with them, like I did a video with a guy by the name of Mike Creel, and, and he had one early on in his farming. Yeah. Um, and he said it was a good tractor, yeah. just not as nice to drive. Yeah, nothing on those. So honestly, the one we had never really gave us much trouble. A um, few odds and ends that we had to do with it. We never had to like overhaul or anything like that. But the cab wasn't super comfortable and it wasn't very quiet. And shifting it, it didn't have any power shift. So it was a little awkward and yeah. didn't turn very tight. And it didn't have great power, obviously. You were always trying to do more with it than you should. So, I mean, it did. It did a lot of things, not very well, but the price was right when my old man bought it back in like 76, so it got us a long ways. It was probably fairly reliable. Yeah, it, it really was. It, it, was a good, it was a good rig. Well, heck, we kept it clear up until we traded it for a 7820, so we had it a long time. That was an improvement, wasn't it? In <laughs> cab comfort yeah. somewhat? Yeah, so my first, one of my first kind of fortes into social media was uh, I did a Facebook post with my dad and he was cleaning out the 1175 it was sitting in the sitting in the door of the machine shed and he was cleaning it out and I shot a little bit and then I got real close to him and then I had him come get in the same position as the 7820 sitting in the door and I was like, man, Dad, I need to have you detail my truck. That looks amazing. You know, and I thought <laughs> yep. I was so smart. And anyway, that was, that was probably the beginning of the insanity. But anyway, it yeah. was a good time. Well, but uh, it's surprising that he went case because you guys had the deer yeah. stuff yeah. around. So the first, the first tractor that was on this farm uh, was a Twin City. Um, and then after that Twin City, my grandpa bought a 39A, and we still have that tractor. And then... Um, so early style. Early style, yep, yep, on steel. Yep, on steel. Okay. And um, my dad cut the lugs down and put, or got rid of them and put rims on it, put rubber tires cut on off. it. But, yep, they did cutoffs or yep. whatever they call it. Um, so they had that, and then he bought a... He bought a, I think he bought a 50 John Deere, and he had that a year, and he traded it and got a 60. And we still have the 60. Yep. Um, and then he, <laughs> he and his brother and his neighbor, there was a Ford dealership down by Crawfordsville. Yep. And they went down, and they got a deal, because those things, they were, well, they were cheap to start with, but they bought three of them. Yep. And they all bought an 8N Ford. And so then we had an 8N Ford, and we still have that. Um, and then the first 4010, he bought, I think he bought that with his brother when they farmed together. And they put that on a mounted picker. Yep. And so it, it planted corn, and it, uh, it 
harvested corn. Cultivate and, or? Yeah, cultivate it with. Actually, that's not true. We cultivated with the 60. We had oh. a, and I still got it sitting in the weeds back behind the old planter. <laughs> we had a front mount, four row, uh, 36 inch yep. cultivator for the 60. And if you wanted to fall asleep, if you wanted to unleash, <laughs> unleash the wrath, uh, put a young kid on that cultivator and get him to try to not fall asleep to the but, 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 but. Because you had to go slow because my dad had the shovel set out so far oh, yeah. to get every bit he could that, you know, I, it was all I could do to stay on the row. And uh, I swiped out enough corn that he eventually, he wouldn't let me cultivate. My oldest brother, he had the touch and uh, I didn't miss that at all. But anyway, we cultivated with that even when I was a kid. We had, we had a term for that around home was iron blight. Oh, the corn got, <laughs> yes. got iron blight this yep. year, you know. Well, you know, that was, a that was a time of maximum tillage. I mean, we plowed everything, then you harrogated, and then uh, you, you uh, rolled it. If it got cloddy, you'd roll it before you planted. Yep. And then as soon as it came up, you cultivated. And if you were really, if you were really quick, my old man would try to cultivate twice. Uh, because when he was a kid, they planted corn with a check wire. Yep. You cultivated it both ways, and yeah. you didn't have herbicide. You didn't have any of that, and they would try. They would try to cultivate it twice. So he was all about that. So yeah, some guys actually later on went to rolling shields so they could start that early. Yep. Yep. And and yeah, we kind of take it for granted herbicides. Oh man. To the, to this day, but yeah, because yeah. there wasn't much at all. It, originally, atrazine. Yep. Um, 2,4-D was early on. Yep. Um, but, uh, obviously there used to be a pile of Treff land cans around here. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, but so, anyway, and now that 4010 is just like narrow front, just like this. narrow front, just like this. Um, both of them, we usually ran them in the spring. You turn the wheels in and then in the fall, you turn the wheels out, you know, uh, cause if you had them turned in, they plug up with stocks or whatever. Oh, yep. So you turn them out. And um, we don't have the wheel weights on this one now, but that one, it, it used to grind feed. Um, I mean, it did everything because we didn't have any tractors with a cab and then until we got that case. But heat housers, and we used to have pigs out in the field. Before, you know, I got in on the very tail end of raising pigs outside. We put our... We put our fat hogs inside in about 76, right in there, 77. Yep. But we'd put our sows in. Um, our first confinement we built in 71, the year I was born, and we had pen gestation. And we, we still farrowed in the barn, but we put the sows, we kept the sows year round. But uh, before that, both of these tractors put the heat houser on and had all the weight you could put on them. And you hauled water to the field, you hauled corn cobs to the field, you throw corn cobs in the burners to keep the water thawed out. And yep. we'd grind feed at the barn and then dump it in a grain evader and haul it out to the field for the big, for the round feeders. And I mean, they just got worked. So both of these tractors have been overhauled. Um, yep. The old one, hell, it, it's probably been overhauled three times because you just run and run and run and run and run. How many hours do you think are on this? This one here, I would not be surprised. I'm sure it has. I'm sure it has probably fifteen thousand hours yeah. on it. Would not surprise me. It is that original paint though. No. Oh, it no. was repainted. Okay. This one, this one's been repainted. Um, the other one has it. I'll show you the other one. It, there's not a lot of green left on it. Uh, and this one. Uh, I, I want to fix it up. I want to redo it. So it does have the, it does have the turbo in it. So this was my favorite cause it was like the hot rod oh, yeah. and you could go when you could go, uh, harrogating with it or run the rotary hoe, you know, you could just go like hell with it. And when you were a kid, you thought, oh man, that's, oh. that was the best. And listening you know? to the straight pipe, you're yeah. with no, no thought towards uh, what's going to happen to your hearing. <laughs> huh? the, yeah, what? exactly. Yeah. When, when you had that rotary hoe and you had her just, you'd get her down just right to where you hit that end and throttle it back and clamp the brake and spin that thing around. Well, you thought you were, you oh, yeah. thought you were pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I want to fix this one up. It doesn't have the aluminum have the oil pan. pan huh? Yeah. No. 
Well, if you get big enough on social media like Tony, somebody will give you one. Yeah, I know. No kidding. I, I didn't even know they made it till I saw him oh, doing really? that. Uh-uh. No. Oh, yeah. And I was like, damn, I got to have that. So a lot of times what you'd see with somebody put the M&W um, turbo on, they'd also do the pan. Then they'd see the pyrometer. They'd oh, have the yeah. M&W pyrometer. Yep. Um, because obviously making all that horsepower with your turbo, yeah. you better keep an eye on things. You oh, know? yeah. And, uh, yeah, M&W, well, John Deere isn't known for being the first one to jump on a bandwagon. Of anything. So they were a little late with the turbocharging game, so yeah. M&W was... Cause, they were printing money. Yeah, because yeah. everybody wanted a big tractor. Well, Deere offered a big roll crop, horsepower tractor but a 5010 and 5020 was kind of a clumsy tractor yeah. where this yeah, was handy the, yeah, yeah everybody wanted this but mm -hmm. with more power yeah. and it wasn't you know really until they didn't really get that until 71 with the 4320 yeah because the 4520 is was the first turbocharged but even a 4520 is kind of a yeah. they're a big yeah they're a big tractor. oversaw yeah yeah right this, the, you know, this, and then obviously the 4020, they hit a home run when they got that because it was the perfect size and it was handy and it was easy to use and pretty damn dependable. Yeah. And that was, well, some people argue they never did top that, but 4440 came close. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. That's, but. And, and it's funny as, as it goes, um, if you look, so the 4010 was the big row crop 540 rpm tractor mm -hmm. most popular it yep. was more popular than the 3010 2510 yep. more popular than the 5010 or the 5020 yep. um then from there the the short production of the 4320 the 4320 was i believe out selling the 4020 at the very end yeah so then when the the 30 series hits the 4430 became and as if you go through time the biggest 540 rpm offered row crop tractor has always kind of been the most yep. popular of the series yeah well the everybody grows to use what they've got so yes. when it comes out it's the biggest and then the equipment all comes to match it and then the next thing you know it outgrows it and you got to come up with something bigger that was kind of the pattern back in the day anyway yeah so. and, and now guys plant with you know 370 horse yeah my neighbor yeah. plant corn with a 370 horsepower 8 yeah. r Oh yeah, it's crazy. It, yeah, so this planted we planted with a a four row seven thousand, um, still sitting in the weeds over there. And we we went we eventually went no till with that. And uh, today we farm our neighbor. We got a, a, a neighbor of ours, friend of ours, David Zeezer. He actually custom farms uh, for us. We we kind of farm together. I I like to say we farm together, except. He has all the really nice stuff, and then uh, we provide the dumb labor to help him. <laughs> and it's it's a match made in heaven because he loves all that goody go fast shit. So I mean, he has the electric shutoffs. He's got the ride control. I mean, he's got the mapping. He's got everything, and he loves that stuff. And yep. so we just sponge off of him. But it's I was just thinking about this when I came over here to start it up. So I plugged it in to make sure that it would start and. You know, this tractor ran every day. Like yeah. sometimes it ran 10 hours a day every day. Maybe it ran more than that. But there was never a day that you didn't didn't run this. Because even later when we got to where uh, we had a bigger tractor, when we had our pigs in confinement, we had a 1,500-gallon better-built manure yep. tank. And we did too. So when you had nothing else to do and you had three boys... Hey, go haul pit because we always had we always had oats ground or alfalfa or we had something yep. where we could haul if there was nothing else to do. And my father was convinced that uh, idle time that's the devil's plaything. So there was no you know if you didn't have yep. anything else to do if you had no if there was no power washing to be done or no pigs to move oh go haul pit. And so one of these was always on a fifteen hundred gallon uh, manure tank and. My dad said the nice thing about having a little tank is you never have to wait because you're either loading, driving, or unloading. So you just never run out of something to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, and even on a 1,500-gallon, especially this has 15.5s on it, yeah. 
you knew it was back there. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. You didn't take this tooling up the road. You know, we were lucky in that all our ground is, you all you had to do was either cross the road or go up the road just a little bit, but, and it's fairly flat, but you get going downhill with a loaded Ooh. tank with, and it's daylight today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're probably, you better be careful because you could jack. We know, ne I never, I don't think we ever got close to doing that, but yeah, you know, it's back there. Oh. Even when you got, even when you had it weighted up, so. Yeah. And, and running that tank, it to take a little power sometimes with the vacuum. Yeah. So, yep. um, well, and, and at the time when you guys bought this, a hundred horsepower tractor was a big tractor. It was, it was a big step up. It was a big step up. Yeah. So, go from a 60 yeah. to this. Yep. Um, I mean, huge. So do you remember when he bought it? I don't remember when he bought the other one, but I remember when he bought this one. Okay. And I was super excited because, uh, it didn't have the straight pipe on it. It had a muffler on it at the time. Uh, but as soon as you started it up, you knew it was different. And yeah. I remember being a little kid and it was like, mm, yeah, that sounds, yeah. you felt like you're pretty Billy badass with that. And so yeah. at one time we had clamp on duels for it. We had a set of, um, extenders, you know, yep. they slid in whatever you want. Yeah. Clamp on duels. Yep. And Band duels is what we always call them. Yeah. And that was, I think we might've only put them on there. We might only had them on there one year because right about that time is when we bought that case and it had duels on it. And so we never dueled it up after that. But Well, I bet if you had this uh, on a disc with a set of duels on there, you probably thought you were. Oh, just, man, uh, you ain't a kidding. You ain't a kidding. Yep, it was. Well, you know, there's something that I feel like we've lost a little bit. I mean, it is what it is, but. There's a whole generation of kids out there, you know, whole generation of people my age that have pretty much the exact same experiences. Maybe you didn't have this, maybe you had an IH, but yep. you know, same thing. That tractor ran all the time, it did everything, and it didn't matter if you were I mean, I don't remember how old I was when I started doing stuff by myself, but I probably wasn't I probably wasn't any too old. I mean, yeah. probably younger than, it probably scared some people if they knew how young I was. And you didn't know any better because just what it was. But we, you had that common experience through a whole generation. And today, it's a pretty unique, it's a pretty unique experience. And even within ag, the, the way people farm and how they farm is so much different to where there isn't that there isn't that commonality at all it's which good or bad doesn't matter it's just it's interesting i guess well and and like i said as a kid um this tractor probably was used for something pretty much every day of the year yeah so you could you probably drove a tractor if you weren't at school yes. um you you drove a tractor every day <laughs> Yo, like every much. single day yep now you can go a month yeah. without driving a tractor, right? Oh yeah. So my everyday driver is one of those two rigs. That's the, today yep. in, so in a hog operation, um, that 320, if you got a dead pig or you got to move a pallet or you got to move some dirt or you got to move some gravel, that comes closer to running every day than any tractor around here does. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just how it is. And like, that 7820, it runs, it runs, maybe it runs 100 hours a year anymore. I mean, yeah. we pull some wagons with it, we chop a few stocks with it. That's about it. That's well, about all we do. Your, your, your tractor growing up was a big deal because yeah. you drove that tractor. And when I got my first nice cab, it was amazing to have yeah. a nice cab, but you could listen to a radio, you could, you know, whatever, yeah. but you felt very connected yeah. to these tractors when you drove them with no cab. And even if you had a fender radio, you couldn't hear it. No, <laughs> no. Like, especially with this. Right. Yeah. So you could barely hear the voices in your head. Yeah. But some of my best thinking was doing that. Yeah. And, uh, um, well, I'm going to have my own farm someday. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, 
And yeah, and you know, the other thing is a lot of, I mean, I hate to know how many hours I spent riding on the fender of this. Just when, when we'd be planting, I'd just ride on the fender with my dad, you know, and just talk to him. And well, me. it was considerably safer than it was riding on the draw bar of the two cylinder, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, my name, my namesake, got hashed out planting corn on this tractor. So, which my my brothers, I came along a little bit later. There's five years between me and my middle brother, seven years between me and my older brother. But when and this always comes up. So when we talk about you know my dad farm with horses and everything. So my dad was 52 years old when I was born. So he was born in 1919. So it's almost like there's a generation missing between yep. us because everybody asked him when he would push me around and as a kid, he's like, Oh, Lawrence, is that your grandkid? Well, no, that's my kid. You know? Yep. And, uh, but he was, he was planting corn. My oldest brother's Todd, my middle brother's Trent. And, uh, they were trying to think of a T name because you know, that's what you do is you, and uh, anyway, it came to him while he was driving that a guy that he flew with when he was in the war, his last name was Torkelson, and his nickname was, was Torque. Yep. And so that was how I got my name. But he, that came, he always told the story. He was planting corn right down there behind Sawyer's house, and he was like, Torque, that's, that's what it's going to be. So anyway, so I have a bond. I have a bond with it. Well, that must have been with the other one, though, right? Yeah, that would have been with the oh, other yeah, one. Yeah. That would have been with the other one. Yeah. yeah. But so. that was, I mean, thinking, and because you had no radio to distract, you had no mm -hmm. cell phone to yeah, distract oh, you. No. There was no auto steer. I mean, if you decided to look away from the field and let go of the steering wheel, <laughs> bad things are going to happen. Yeah. Like, 100%. 100%. Like, so you just kind of would... Schemed. Yeah. Schemed. And, yep. and there's some of that that I miss. And right. there, there was so much tractor time because, like you said, compared to like the 7820 over there, yeah. the equipment today, um, yes, is, is nicer, quieter, but it's bigger. Yeah. So the tillage equipment this pulled is a third the size of the tillage equipment that that would pull. Yep. And we do less tillage than we did then. Yeah. So if you look at it in terms of, I bet you do 10% of the tractor work you did oh, yeah. 50 years ago. Oh, yeah, and you can ask Sawyer, like, <laughs> in the fall, you know, we basically no-till everything. The only thing we do is we've got a Bessler that's like a mechanical stock chopper. It's got those rolling yep. baskets. Yep. So before we, before we drag line our manure, we chop those stocks with that. And it takes about takes about two and a half days if if you know you if you well if you really go at it if you stretch it out you can make it last for like three days maybe yep. doing it and every year Sawyer's like are you, are you you want me to run that for a while and I'm like no I'm good because <laughs> you just don't get to do it anymore you know right. that's like that's one of the few things we do and I always tell people you know we're a small farm we're we are definitely a small farm and you know, I'll go to town with, with my wife or something and people are like, how's, you know, how's harvest coming or how's planting coming? You know, how are you doing? And cause if they see in town, they think, well, you must be done. And I tell them I'm like, here's the deal. Uh, we, we plant, we plant, you know, 230 acres of corn and we use a 12 row planter. So if we're the last ones in Jackson township to start, we can still be the first ones done and we can do it all during daylight hours. And that's if we don't start before 10 o'clock, you know, cause it, it just goes so fast. Yeah. When I was a kid, I mean, it took a month easy, solid, if the weather cooperated. And if it didn't cooperate, you might start planting corn. Well, you might start the first of May maybe, yeah. but you might not get done till the middle of June. You don't know. Oh yeah. It I was... mean, it, it was a whole different deal. So, oh, well, when you had to mow board plow everything, I mean, weeks oh, yeah. of plowing. Yeah, like, absolutely. So, yeah, the, the amount of tractor driving and the, and I, I think of that with kids, like for our generation, like I said, I mean, you, you had bragging rights 
with yeah. your, with your buddies. Yeah, about how long, how much work you had done. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And how you know your tractor could help pull their oh, tractor yeah. or something, or even like tractor pulling as a kid. Like the tractor pulls around our area were huge yep. because no, there was more people interested. There were more farmers, but farm kids were really attached to those tractors. And like you're saying with the stock chopper, if you want to work that tractor. You could just shift up to shift up yeah. until it works. <laughs> yeah, but it's right. it's not the same as no. board plowing with something coming up to the knob and the tractor's yeah. starting to lug down and you yeah. know a flame is coming out of the stack. It's yeah. way different. Hundred percent. Yeah, or you know, when you're a kid hauling wagons in, you'd haul wagons in and it's getting cold and it's getting dark and you're you almost you think you're almost gonna get stuck, you know, and you pull out the stop on the on the override, the override, and the and the pipes glowing red, you know, and you're just and you're just hoping, you're just hoping because if you want to piss your dad off, there's nothing that'll piss a father off more in the middle of harvest than having to get out of the combine to pull you, you know, if you got stuck. <laughs> you did not want to be the son that got stuck because I guarantee you, even though if you were taking those wagons right up the path and he said. Stay right on here. Don't go, you know, don't go over here. Don't go over here. Go here. If you got stock here, I guarantee you, I told you not to go yep. there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a different world. Um, and, you know, I've got newer tractors, and I like, I like them a lot. Oh, yeah. But you still kind of go back to, well, and even like for me, don't have, you know, a boat or a fancy side by side or a camper yeah. that all the people seem to have now. But I have a really nice tractor because that was that was more important exactly to exactly. me than. Um, so yeah, like you said, you don't want to give up your field work. Yeah, no, right now, but now like Sawyer, he that doesn't mean anything to him. Like in his mind, if it's more efficient, if it's more efficient, if it's better then he's all about it because he doesn't have that connection to it. Like he kind of, he kind of enjoys, he enjoys planting, he enjoys harvest, but it's cause you know, it's something different that we don't do the rest of the year, but he doesn't have any attachment to it. Just, it's just not, it's just cause he grew up different. He grew yeah. up totally different generation. So, but, and I mean, it's all, it is truly, we live in amazing times. So, you know, whether it be, whether it be that skid loader or I got a little utility tractor that we bought just to, we mow around the hog buildings and um, do a few odds and ends with. And it's a little tiny, it's a 60, 60 horse tractor. Yep. But the amount of like what you can lift with it and what you can pull with it compared to a 60. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy the yeah. amount of, technology and the engineering that goes into stuff like that and it's great but you know i'll always have a soft spot for this yeah you know? yeah there's and you know just like when my grandpa went to horse poles when i yeah. was a kid and i kind of rolled my eyes i'm like we're watching a horse do this for yeah. he he his beginning years and mm -hmm. his formidable growing up was walking behind a team of horses. Yep. So to him, he still held that attachment. Yep. So these tractors will stick around yeah. farms. And, and through our generation, as we get older, they'll yeah. still be very in demand for collectability. But I do think someday that will dissipate. Oh, no, it will. It, it will. It's just, it's just exactly like you know, I showed you, I still have a, a high, I've got one high wheeled wagon, 36 yep. inch high wheeled wagon that we've had on this farm. Cause my dad grew up hand, hand, uh, picking corn, you know, and bouncing it off the sideboard and, yep. you know, unloading it in the corn crib and all that. Well, there ain't anybody left that that means anything to, to you know, to, yep. so none of that stuff is worth, it's not worth anything unless somebody has got a museum and, and this stuff will go the same way. But I also think the other, the other thing is, like, is anybody going to have their collectible 8R, you know? 
I think so to a certain extent, um, just because there's guys that uh, are just that nuts about tractors. Yeah. You know, so fun. Not near as many though. There won't because they're well for one. There's just not as many of us. No. And then out of that group, I just feel like there'll be some, but it won't be it won't be anywhere near. Like you're not gonna have a tractor parade when when so Sawyer's 23. When yep. Sawyer's 55 years old, do you think they're gonna have a tractor parade for the fair in Washington, and you're gonna have 150, you know, uh, mag boxcar magnums and you know. 4960s or whatever. I don't know. I, I think there will to a certain extent simply because when you look at, uh, look how many 4010s there were yeah. around versus 8Rs. Now, yeah. you might be like, well, yeah, there's quite a few 8Rs, but if you actually tally it up and you look in your whole area, you're like, oh, 10 of those 8Rs covers a, a big lot swath. of acres. So they don't build the, right. the numbers the way they used to. So there's scarcity built in, you think? Yeah, to a certain extent. Yeah. Oh, um, you, you may be right. And, um, you know, some things they say nowadays, you know, we always say, well, they don't build things like they used to. I I have that 8225R. Yeah. They build it pretty good. There's a lot of iron. <laughs> they build them pretty them. good. I mean, you take that next to a 4850, and, and yeah. a 4850 when we were young yeah. was like, oh, Monster. Yeah. Monster. That 8225R is way yeah. heavier. You can just cook, hook on and drag it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I, I think some of that stuff will be around. But yes, you got to be careful with tractors. Now, when you bought a hundred horsepower tractor sixty years ago, yeah. it was way different than you can get a hundred horsepower tractor today that probably wouldn't be able to pull as much as your John Deere sixty. Yeah, right. Yeah, because there's they're tin wheels, they're yeah. plastic, they're they're not yeah. built. No, you know, no, not at all. And, yeah, that that sixty horse tractor that I have that we mow with, you. Like that 60, we plowed with that thing. Right. You know, had a two bottom plow, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember it. But you put that on there and you probably pull it in half eventually, is what would happen. Yeah. I don't know. It's just not made for that. It's made, it's got that horse to do lighter things. Yeah. Because, um, like, a, you know, a utility tractor, you know, and deer even, you know, I'm sure the other companies do it too. Like, they, they don't. So, when say the the 4020 was new or even the 4010 and 3010 they offered a 3010 utility yep that's right but our neighbor had one of those yeah but it's not like the 3010 utility had tin wheels and right. was plastic everywhere it was just the shape of the tractor where now they they sell utility tractors mm -hmm. and they sell row crop tractors yep. and if you try and cross the two you're yep. probably going to have some <laughs> Bad results because yeah. I've I've seen some of the utility tractors tore apart and you look at the final drives and stuff and you're like, yeah. uh, that's not made. No, no, no. And there's a reason why that sixty probably has never had the drivetrain. Oh yeah. Fixed. Yeah. I mean maybe probably put pistons or or rings or just rings even. Yeah. Um, I think rings. I think that's the only thing that's ever been done to it. Yeah, and and maybe put clutch facings in the hand clutch, which you could do just walking up to the side of it yep. and. But I bet the gears and, and the final drives in that yeah. tractor are probably pretty much all original. Yeah. That's something else that's interesting is, you know, when my dad bought this, he had the owner's manual. But then I, I think he just got, I could be wrong, but we have the shop manual for it. Yep. And like that generation, you, if that ended up at the dealership, you really, you really jacked something up because they did, a, they did a hell of, I think he and my, I think he and my, uh, uncle, I think they overhauled that other one the first time themselves in the little garage at, at her house. Yeah. And you just did it. So today, one, you can't even do it because it's some idiot light that locks everything down and you don't know what it is anyway. Yeah. But also the, the level of technology versus the level of knowledge of people it's it's not as much mechanical knowledge as it is electrical and and right. omen something out and all that. But you know that when these were built, a lot of people there were a lot of people that could tear one of these down and split them. You yeah, didn't have to take it. You didn't have to take it to the dealership, or you didn't because you did it all yourself. Right. You well, you had to. The you money had to. was money. The money was wasn't tight. there. Like um, and 
and deer actually in the two-cylinder days prided themselves on the fact that the farmer, like deer, deer expected you were going to work on your own tractor. Right. They were, like service department. Yeah. Like service that was luxury. You yes. might have an old farmer that had a lot of money that's going to say, well, you know, pull her in, put rings in her this winter yeah. or something like that. But in yeah. general, um, that deer had said, well, the beauty of the two-cylinder was the farmer can, you know. It, if it killed out in the field from a problem, you could probably tear that engine down yep, and fix 100%. it. Yeah, 100%. So, well, I think you did a video where you're talking about, was that a 1086 where you talked about how many bushels of corn it cost to oh, buy it versus how many bushels it cost to buy a new tractor? I mean, well, it's crazy. Well, I compared it with, um, well, I always said the sweet spot in farming, if you wanted to get into farming, was the 90s. When we had recovered from the 80s yep. and before things took off, because I just comparing my... 4440, my 8200, and a brand new 8R. And you you go with uh, how many, with the price of that tractor, and First. the acres you could buy at the time. Oh, sure. All the way along, and you're like, so 40 acres of farmland bought a 4440. Mm -hmm. That's It was going to cost you 40 acres of farmland. Yeah. And today, it's going to cost you 40 acres of farmland to buy that 8R, right? <laughs> right. But when the 8200 was new, for the cost of the 8200, you could have bought like 120. Yeah. Yep. And yep. Um, so it, it's relative, but in, in general, as farming, we, equipment gets bigger. Mm -hmm. Farmers get better at farming. We yep. do less farming yep. all the time. Yep. And that's good and bad. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah. So that cost, that cost is somewhat relative, but the productivity of what you buy is so great that the amount of time you actually use that tractor for that ground is just keeps getting smaller and smaller. However, you got to have it. Oh, you, know, you got to have it. Well, and what's amazing is, so when the 4010 was new and you were, you bought your 4010 and then, you know, your, your farm is growing, you're expanding you need more and more. So guys were, you know, putting fluid in the tires, yep. hanging wheel weights on it, putting the M&W turbo on so they could get more out of the old 4010. Yep. Now, like I said, the guys have horsepower so available. Yeah. And from it's not your says, limiting factor. Yeah. Guys aren't, I mean, nobody is hardly anymore. Like anybody that's, that's buying a new tractor, it's not like they're getting to the hill, pulling yeah. the planter and they're, they're, just yeah. downshifting and crossing their, their fingers that they make yeah. it. Most of these guys, it's all IVT. and it You just, don't even know it's back there. Yep. yep yeah, nobody's pulling the override and getting to run at <laughs> anything anymore, you know. No, nope, not at all. So we, not at all. We've taken some of the, well, some of the operator out of it. Because there were guys that were better mm -hmm. operators than others. Yep. And, uh, you know, I always joke, we had a neighbor that uh, when Auto Steer came out and they said, well, you know, you can get, RTK, which is sub inch accurate, you know, for planting, he still was like, yeah, that's just, I could still be too crooked with that. He still had to do it himself. Cause, so, cause there were the farmers that yep. drive around and look at their, and they'd be oh. like, oh gosh, look at those roads. So <laughs> when I was a kid, well, my dad always made the comment that, you know, his generation, they, they plowed everything you plow. Not only did you plow. So here in Jackson township, there was three or four farmers that they had a they had a section of railroad tie or of rail yep. railroad rail I don't know if it was 40 feet long but in the fall of the year they would take and they'd put a team on each end of it and I don't know if they had a team in the middle or not what it took to pull it but they would go through because you hand picked the corn so the yep. stocks were still there even though it wasn't hybrid and you would drag that and knock all those stalks off the first first good frost you had because that had bust them off. Yep. Then you had a dump rake, and you'd go out with a dump rake, and you'd scoop up the stalks and put them in a windrow. Then you'd burn them. Then you plowed. Yeah. And he always said that when you plowed, there better not be any stubble showing because anybody that drove by would be like, well, look at that. Now, that's a piss-poor farmer there. Yeah. You see that stubble? You wanted to see nothing but black, because if you had stubble out there, it, oh, that was piss poor. And yeah. then same way when I was a kid, you know, my dad prided himself on when you turned around with that planter and you dropped it in, 
you didn't follow the mark. You followed the mark as far as your eye could see because yep. those rows had to be straight as an arrow, especially by the highway. Now the back, clear back down by the creek, that might not be as big a deal. And if you were driving to church on Sunday and you saw somebody that dropped that plan or two too soon, you know, and it, it was out in the yep. out into the end rows and it went like that. Oh, you could I, you could just I can remember me and my brother sitting in the back of the Oldsmobile and I just like my oldest brother just elbowed me, and my dad would be like, oh, geez, boys, you see that? Oh, my gosh, that's embarrassing, you know, that's yeah. embarrassing. He goes, you know, that's so-and-so's hired man. You better be firing him. Better be firing him. So, yeah, you take the crazy. Yeah, and, and now we've taken that operator yeah. out of it. It's auto steer, yep. um, you know, or even setting combines. Now they got combines where they have automation. Yep. Where guys were, I mean, they they took pride when, which always kind of cracked me up because they'd be like, your FM, you know, they'd dock you over, you know, 3% or whatever, and they'd yep. still be trying to get FM down to absolute zero. And it's like, yep. well, you're still getting paid for, yep. but no, it was a pride thing. And that's, that's the thing about agriculture is at the end of the day, we're all very, if you're in this, you got to have the passion for it, but you also there's a lot of competition in it. It's just, yep. it's it's the idea of doing better with what you have and everybody's looking for an edge. I mean, as far back as you want to go, yeah. they're looking for an edge and we still are today. Yep. So some things don't change. No, I, yeah, I, I do feel that the competition has gotten a little bit tougher yes. than it was. I don't think there's the neighborly interactions that there once were no and you know i i miss that because i was a kid you know growing up in the 70s and 80s and my mother my mother was in every every club she was in the the hj club which was a neighborhood club and she was in the fleur de lis club and she was in the questers the daughters of the american revolution and then you had we were good presbyterians so you know there was a there was a, a dinner after church at least one Sunday a month that you had to go to. But, you know, we had neighborhood, I don't know how many times a summer or in the winter yep. or whenever you'd have, somebody was always having a get together. And, and you knew every neighbor, heck, you knew every neighbor in a, I don't know, five, six, ten mile radius and yep. on a first name basis. And, you know, now I got a housing development that's a half a mile from me and I might know five people that live there. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's funny because all this technology and social media, like I know you, yeah. you live five miles, five hours away from me better than I might know a guy that's farming, you know, that moved in here, whatever, rented ground that's yeah. two miles from me. It's just a, it's a strange, it's a strange, strange thing. It is. It is. And, and I think as much as I like big equipment and tractors like that. I, I sometimes wonder if we, if we never would have got any bigger than that, if we wouldn't be better off as. Gosh, dang it. I'm giving away, I'm giving away all the good. I'm getting away all my podcast material. There what are we going to talk about? You think I, we're going to have anything left to talk about? I think about? there'll be something to talk about. We can <laughs> I think get, we will. Get into that age where you're just honoring about anything. So <laughs> who cares? Yep. hundred percent. But we should wrap up the 4010 before yeah. it gets. To, so it came along. This was. I mean, this was the hot rod. This was, and I'm guessing the 1175 being the bigger tractor, you probably weren't running that one as much as you had to run the no. second. No, I wasn't. I had to earn my earn my way in that. You know, when we first got that, my dad drove that. It was too complicated. It was too complicated. When that was, even that though case. this was a synchro, and there's guys today that still can't run a synchro. I, so yeah, I know. But that case wasn't a whole lot better. It was a little bit better, but. But it was a cab, and I'm sure your dad really appreciated having a cab. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even no. if he wouldn't admit it, he probably said more than once, I don't, you don't need that cab. Yeah. But. Oh, there's a, my wife found a picture the other day of me. I'm little, little, and we're standing out in front of the, we used to have a sign by the road, and my wife looked at it. She goes, does your dad have hair? Because he was basically bald uh, from the time he got out of college. But she looked at this picture, and she's like, is your dad got hair? Looks like he's got a fishbowl haircut. No, it was from, it was a summer and he was cultivating and his hat, you know. <laughs> yep. So his his head is, he didn't have a hat on because we were going somewhere, so he was dressed up. So 
his head, he's got a line all the way around, and it's white as a baby's bottom, and the rest of him just looks like, he looks like just tan as can be. So it yep. looked like he had hair, but yeah. So he appreciated that cab. Absolutely. So how he made it that far never had skin cancers beyond me, because he just get baked. Oh, yep. That whole generation did, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. But, I mean, they just, they didn't know anymore that nope. they just keep, keep working. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, they were... They were just tough like that. Mm. So, so yeah. Did now? Did you ever? Did they have tractor pulls around here? Yeah. Oh yeah. Did you ever get to pull this? No. Or no. Never did. Never did. Uh, Washington County Fair. In fact, they still do have a tractor pull. Okay. Here. So there was. So Ernie Rop. You might know Ernie Rop. The Rop boys from Kelowna. They owned the John Deere dealership. They yep. just sold it to Sinclair. So Ernie Rop was a big tractor puller. Uh, John Deere. Yep. Had it for years and years and years. I think it was called, what was the name of that tractor? Because he had multiple ones, yep. but it was always named the same, the same thing. Yep. And they went all over the Midwest tractor pulling. Yep. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty popular around here, but I never, we never got into it. We were too busy taking care of the pigs. Maybe if we didn't have the pigs. Yeah. That, the the pigs were always like the wet blanket on the, on the, social, <laughs> on the social end. Well, yeah. you know, it's like dairy. Oh yeah, It'd be nice to go there, but we don't have any time. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe next year. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so then the old forty ten. Yeah. Stayed all these years though. It didn't get traded. It didn't get. We never got rid of anything, and it. I guess it never really had a time that we thought. For even when even when we got to where we didn't really use it, it's one of those things that. It's kind of like part of the family for one yeah. and two it's like when you look at what you could get out of it versus the sentimental value of having it yep i don't know it probably never go in fact it'll, it'll be the first thing out the door my grand when i'm gone my grandkids will be like let's get rid of all this crap you know I, yeah i don't know maybe not maybe not but you know it it is it's hard to say um because yeah. even like when you say things age out, you know, and like, like having an 8R won't yeah. mean a lot. On the other hand, when I think about it, um, if I had unlimited funds, right, I'd like to have a Spoker D. I'd yeah. like to have a Waterloo Boy. Yeah. And I never, I mean, I've never yeah. driven a Waterloo Boy in my life. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've even driven a D. I've, I've driven plenty of two-cylinders, but, yeah. um, you know, that two-cylinder market dropped off. Yeah. Just, but the average run of the mill, the B's, the, you know, H's, the A's, that yeah. kind of stuff. But the, you know, the more rare, mm -hmm. the more oddball stuff, like a two cylinder diesel, I got a 720 diesel. I love a two cylinder yeah. diesel. There's, yeah. There's nothing better. Yeah. There's nothing better. That sound is just, that's yep. just something. Yeah. So maybe there still will be, um, some attachment to that and, and maybe people come back around i mean um i'm not a big gun guy yeah but uh i have i have a lever action winchester that i mean i love to shoot that gun yeah and and if you were actually going to defend yourself or or go to war you'd yep. probably want an ar-15 but uh, <laughs> I'll, 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 the, the lever action will get the job done the winchester's pretty fun to shoot well, heck, you should have brought it. We put you on the horse. Maybe you could ride side saddle, you know, hanging I'm not, off. Yeah, I, I did not get the horsemanship passed down through the generations. Dang it. Dang that it. part of it just kind of. <laughs> Probably better for your bottom line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they say a horse has two parts of its anatomy and one one behind it and one on top of it. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, I. I I don't know um, how people will end up attached. And it does, farms are gonna continue to get bigger, they always do. Yep. They just will. But you know, there is a, there's a following of this, um, like, like people like the muscle tractors now, like this. Yes. And, and yep. there's a lot of people that are finding some joy in having a handful of animals. Yep. You know, um, and and there's enough of these farmsteads that were sold off that uh you know now if a guy's buying a farm he's going to survey off as little as possible yep. but a lot of that you know there's guys that have a few acres yep and boy they're they, looking for a little tractor to do something with yep and 
really, when you look at pricing a new utility oh. tractor versus one of these, yeah. they're still a pretty good deal. Yeah. So. And food, by us, like food plots. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I got friends that hunt, and they get into their food plots, and they're asking me more farmer questions than, I'm like, I'm not an yeah. agronomist. Leave me alone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. But right. they, they put more, I mean, I think they worry about their food plot more than I worry about our crops. Oh, yeah. And so maybe those guys will get attached to stuff, but then on the other hand, maybe they'll be attached to little compact utility tractors instead yeah, of Yeah, it's stuff. hard to say. But, it's hard to say. You know, either way, there there's an era of farming, and, I, and I've discussed this with my friends a lot, that I feel very fortunate to have grown up mm -hmm. when we did. 100%. Because we yeah. got to see the hard way, mm -hmm. and and yep. we we get to live with the newer and the better, but we got to see yep. when this we've got perspective that a lot of people don't have. Right, yep. right. 100%. So I I feel that's that's pretty fortunate. Yeah, you know. So this one would be probably your favorite tractor. Yes, it is without a doubt. I mean, I love. I, I, I'm glad that we've got all of them, and I like the new stuff, and but. This this one is by, you know, it's like my little brother kind of, you know, we yeah. shared a lot. It's it's a lot of life experiences that just go with it. So it's probably not going anywhere. It's gonna stick here at least as long as I am. So. Yep, yep. That's all I can ask. It probably it deserves it. It helped. Yeah. It helped build the farm. Exactly right. Exactly right. You know, it's it's pretty safe to say that it wouldn't be the farm. Yeah, hundred percent. Without hundred percent. Yep. So and people forget like the bond these tractors, you know that 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 you form with these tractors. A lot of that came from farming wasn't always lucrative, right? Had this been a a piss poor tractor, an unreliable, and not performed well, yep. you know you wouldn't have been able to. I mean, to fix it all the time, you wouldn't have been able to afford to do that, or right. you wouldn't have got your crops in when you needed to, etc. Um, that was very important yeah 100 percent. to make a farm last so yeah but i suppose we should probably wind this one up and yeah go do a podcast where we can it's warmer up there anyway yeah all right well thanks torque yep thanks a lot for coming down yeah